Crazy Bird Burn and today we are talking about compositing because compositing is the greatest thing ever to do in harmony after lip sync and maybe other things. I don't know. At the moment, it's my favorite thing, okay? So we're going to talk about compositing because it's cool and uh, more precisely about gradients. So did you ever need to work with a gradient but felt making just a shape with a gradient was not enough? Because, you know, you can just make a rectangle and flip with a gradient color. But you cannot really animate that or you have to do it frame by frame. His life is too short to do anything frame by frame of that kind. So yeah, we're gonna talk about the gradient node. In case you didn't know, Harmony has a node and it's called a gradient. So to get it, you press enter and you press on the letter G, R, A, D. And then it's a E and it, no, it's an I. And then it's an E. I always make the mistake to write A, but it's because I'm French, but it's, it's an E and T. And then you find your gradient and it's a light blue node, so it means it's an element node. So it means it's something visual that you can interact with and, you know, slap a peg on it if you feel like it. So the gradient node is amazing because it just gives you a gradient. Without you having to make a color palette for it or like a swatch or make a shape, it's just a gradient. So let me tell you, I use that thing all the time. Like, I use it a lot. It's, it's not healthy. Okay? You shouldn't use it as much as I do. I'm just very lazy, okay? And I tend to work on very quick contract, like these Game Grumps thing that takes like four days and then you're done. So when I have a gradient, I like to use it maybe with like a blending node to, you know, give mood to my scene. And uh, the way that you use a gradient is very easy. You take it, you slap it on a composite, wherever you want on your scene, in front or behind. And then you can go into the properties and uh, there's a few properties you can adjust. You can decide if it's linear or if it's radial. And you can see this little triangle, that's normal. That's to indicate that you are using a gradient and not a color card. Because if I was using a color card, um, it would look something like this. It's squares. So color card is a square and the gradient is a triangle. So yeah, gradient. You choose if it's linear or radial. And then you can also choose a color. So uh, black or blue or whatever you want. And for now, you can only gradient to two colors. I mean. Maybe one day my dream will become a reality and we'll be able to gradient with how many colors we want and make the rainbow of our dreams. But for now, it's just two, but it's fine. And uh, you can also uh, play with the alpha of that color. So if I put zero, it's gonna go to towards uh, zero. But be careful, it's not gonna go towards like white to white zero. It's gonna go from white to like black zero, which is gonna make a difference if you pick black zero instead of like white zero. Look, it does make a difference, okay? So just so you know. Because then it becomes like white to gray to nothing instead of white to white to nothing. <laughs> so that's important. You can use a gradient with two colors or like I said, you can use it going from a color to nothing. Or sometimes you can even use it going from black to uh, white and leaving it opaque. And then you can use a bunch of compositing trick to transform that into a mask. My favorite most fast one is to just use a grayscale node and make it a model put, which is gonna make it transparent. But um, there's other compositing tricks you can do for it, uh, but it's just so easy to just already use it as a transparent thing, so like, why bother, right? It's just great. And then, you know, you can take a blending node and you can slap it on it and it's just going to give you a cool look. Of course, you need to be into render view to see what the blending node does. But yeah, so that's one way you could use it. And this is the easy way. This is like level minus zero. It's very easy You just connect it and you, use it like that what if you want to move the gradient so you just have to click on the gradient and then you go to the show control button some people argue it's a scar i like to say it's an orange train track but just one side of it and when you click on it you have this little manipulators that go from green to red red being the top color of your little window and green being the bottom one so then you can just using the transform tool you can just move these little points and it's going to move your gradients to, you know, place them the way that you want. It's pretty cool. At the moment, it's gonna be static, but be careful because if you move it um, in your timeline uh, like this, it's going to give it a keyframe. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to because then if I go here and I change it again, then I will have multiple keyframes. Which means that it's very annoying when you don't want to do that, but it also means that it's pretty cool because then you can animate it. So I'm gonna just remove this gradient and actually use one that I prepared in the scene because I'm such a well-prepared person and I organize my node view all the time, mm -hmm, of course. And yeah, I have a gradient here. We can't see it because there's a visibility node, but I'm gonna disable it. So I'm also gonna remove the cutter so you can see it. That gradient is a radial gradient and it moves following Dan's ghost tail. And when we render it, it looks like this. 
pretty cool. So what I did is I just, using a peg, I put the peg on the gradient and this allowed me to move the gradient around. And the fun thing is that if I click on the gradient, I can also click on the points themselves and I can change, you know, the way they are glowing. Like that. You could also just animate this uh, like this and just move it in, this, in your scene. But when I do my compositing, I like to use like different layers of things. So I like to have my movement on the peg and the how much it shines directly on the gradient. That's just how I like to compartment stuff. Yeah, and then if you animate the peg following something, uh, you can have some cool effects. So that's how you use the gradient node. I hope that you enjoyed it. Yay! Goodbye now. Thank you